Hey everybody, this is Ben with devslopes.com. And in this video, we are gonna set up our points of interest on our AR tabletop kit map from Mapbox. The first thing we're gonna have to do to do that is to switch back over to our main game scene. So let's scroll down and go check out our scenes. And we've got our main game. So let's double click on that. And that should open up the main game scene, which should look pretty familiar. It's got our UI and everything set up. So let's go ahead and click on our AR tabletop kit. And then we're going to go to the map holder object and the map root specifically is what we're looking for. Now this should look pretty familiar. This is where we set up our Mapbox Studio stuff, our Mapbox Studio URL. And we talked briefly about image and terrain. But right now, we're going to pay special attention to the vector. Now, the vector is the set of buildings and all that stuff. It's essentially the objects on a map. And you've got these really cool things called vector layer visualizers that we briefly went into before. Just as a refresher, if we click on the extruded buildings vector layer visualizer, you'll see that it's a primitive type of polygon. It's looking for buildings. And we've set up box colliders and a whole bunch of different stuff to make this work so that when we press play, we've got buildings. We're going to go ahead and set up another visualizer from scratch. So to do that, we'll click add visualizer. And I'm going to double click slowly on the title. And we're going to change this to points of interest commonly referred to as POI for short. So let's take a look at some of the settings that we've got. By default, it's active. We've got a primitive type of polygon and they have different options available in here. If you remember from Mapbox Studio, there were a few different options available. Well, we've got our point, our line and our polygon. The polygon is basically saying, hey, this is an object. It's not like a road or something. It's something that's statically there that has shape. And the layer name is the key, and it's case sensitive, by the way, but it's the key that we're going to be looking for to say, hey, this is the type of object I'm looking for. In this case, we are going to be looking for buildings. Then we've got an option for snap terrain, which when we have it turned on, is going to tell the map, go ahead and snap any buildings, any anything on this layer that we're looking for, snap it to the terrain. So say the area we were looking at was on a mountain, it would go ahead and automatically snap it to the proper elevation if we've got our terrain set up to not be flat. Using the group features option is essentially a memory saving technique, and it will group all of the features in a tile set into one game object as opposed to a whole bunch of them. So for example, in our extruded buildings of visualizer, we have a whole ton of buildings and right now they're all grouped into one object. We're going to want to break those up, but we'll get to that later. Then we've got our collider type and that should be pretty familiar to anyone who's used Unity before. You've got your box, mesh and sphere collider. We're going to set it up to box since we're looking at buildings and they're typically pretty boxy. Extrusion type, we're going to set to property height to match our extruded buildings. And we want the roof and the side with property name of height and scale factor of one. Texturing type is fine with tiled. And we're going to update this material. Now, points of interest, we want to look different. We want it to be something that stands out. So we're not going to use the same stuff as other buildings. We want something that's going to stand out compared to all of the whitish buildings that we've got set up already. And that should do the job. Next, we want to add some filters. So if it's already if it's collapsed, then go ahead and expand this advanced tab. And we're going to click add new empty filter. And I'm going to drag this over so it's much more visible for you. And the filters operate off of a string key, which is case sensitive and a string value. Now, much like when we were setting up the Mapbox Studio maps, we're going to have 
operators and combiner types. So we want this to be set to contains since we're going for a string. And the key is going to be type, all lowercase. And the first one that we're adding is hospital. And then add new empty. And it'll carry over all the values. So it's already set to type contains. Let's change this one to school. And then one more empty filter. And we're going to change this to public buildings. So just public, all lowercase. And the combiner type, we want to be any. Our options are any, all, or none. And we're going to use the none here in just a minute for the other visualizer. Because right now, the other visualizer has no filters, which means it's coming back with every type of building. And we don't want to double render and have overlap these points of interest and the other building. And then just so you get the full sweep, we've also got mesh modifiers and game object modifiers, but we're not going to mess with those too much. If you hover over them, they've got a brief description and the mesh modifiers just manipulate features meshes and the game object modifier modifies game object information and features. So this is going to deal specifically with the game object. This is going to deal more with like the texture and the mesh. With that, we should have this set up. So let's go to our extruded buildings layer visualizer. And we're going to add a couple of filters to this one too. So click add new empty under filter. And we're going to type in a key of type and hospital. Add new empty. School for the string value. Add new empty. And this is going to be public, just like the other one. The difference here is the combiner type. So right now it's set to any. We want it to be none. So what we're doing now is filtering out these values. So we're not going to return any hospital, schools, or public buildings in this visualizer. Instead, they're going to get picked up in the points of interest one. Now, when we go to render this, it should look pretty different. We should have these points of interest buildings in that orangish yellow that we picked out. So let's press play and see if that actually happened. Okay, our game is running, so I'm going to deselect this. And what do you know? We've got a bunch of yellow buildings hanging out all over the place. And the rest are this whitish color that we've got going on for this, for this mesh. Perfect. That's what we're going for. That's awesome. Okay. So with that, we're actually done with the visualizer for now. We've just got one more thing to do that I mentioned earlier. So let's go ahead and stop this. And first, this assertion failed. And it's saying that the game manager is null when it's not supposed to be null. So let's go into the UI controller script, which it mentions down here in the error, and open up UI controller awake. We're calling the game manager instance. Oh, I'll bet you I know what it is. Let's try moving this assertion into the start. And the reason for that is this is probably an execution order issue because we're not using a loader and doing things in order per se. So it very well could be trying to grab this before the game manager is finished initializing. So let's try putting that in the start and see what that does for us. Let's go back to Unity and click Run and see if that error goes away. Let's click on the debug window and yep, error is gone. So that's what I would assume that is. So now that that's fixed, we've got one more thing to do for our points of interest. So let's go to our map root object. And you'll notice we talked briefly about it, but if you click on the points of interest visualizer, we've got, let me scroll this out so you can see it better. We've got these game object modifiers. Now what that's for is to update the game object and it uses a certain map box class. And this is going to be the answer to a question that may have already crossed your mind. With these buildings and with the points of interest, how do we tell what's what? How do we separate them? Well, normally we do that with game tags, and that's exactly what we're going to do here. 
So step one is going to be to come down here. And I'm just going to include this in our resources. So let's create a new folder. And we're going to say Mapbox modifiers. And we'll right click here. And we're going to go to create. And then there's this map box option here that's at the top of the list. And it's got modifiers, map visualizers, feature collections, factories, scriptable palettes, and Atlas info. The one we're going to worry about right now is the modifiers, but you should already be fairly familiar with all of these other ones. So we've got our map visualizer, which you've already seen. Um, that's, that's what we're messing with right now. The feature collection the factories, which are your terrain and image factories that we've seen already. But if we go up to the modifiers, we're going to want to add a new modifier for our game object. We're going to add a tag modifier. And we're going to name this POI tag with a space in between. And in this tag slot, we're just going to write POI. Done. Perfect. And then we're going to right click on the modifiers folder and we're going to create another Mapbox modifier, tag modifier. And we're just going to name this building. And I need to read it, rename this because I didn't name it. So the tag will be called building. And the actual tag text is going to be building as well. Now we can go to our map root. And we're going to click on points of interest. Scroll down to the bottom and click add new empty under the game object modifiers title. And we're just going to drag our POI tag over into the game object modifier. Perfect. And then we'll scroll back up, switch to the extruded buildings and do the exact same thing, add new empty to the game object modifier, and drag our building modifier into that slot. Done. So let's save. And now we should see something pretty cool. If we go ahead and press play, I'm going to shrink down these menu sizes so that we can see a little more clearly. I'm going to click on one of these buildings. And you'll notice that this building, this point of interest building, is still untagged. Why is that? Well, we forgot to add the actual tag. So let's stop running. And we're just going to click on an object so that I can quickly pull up the tag inspector. We're just going to add tag. And I'm going to add a tag and I'm going to call this one building. And then one more tag and it'll be POI. Let's see if that's any better. So press play. And let's click on this guy. And hey, our tag is working. So we've got the POI tag and the building tag. How cool is that? Mapbox allows us to dynamically set tags, as well as a whole bunch of other information using their game object modifiers on the fly. That, as you can imagine, is a super awesome feature. And that's going to allow us to do some pretty cool things here with Drenches of War. So let's stop running, save our project, and we're going to go ahead and call this video good. Um, we're at a point where we can move on. So just to wrap up, in this video, we've really done a lot of work. We've familiarized ourselves even further with Mapbox's visualization layers. We've messed with a bunch of settings. We've added a new layer visualizer. And we've introduced ourselves to their game object modifiers, created some new tags to dynamically get set, and put our map in a place where now it's really usable. Great job following along, and I'm excited to move on with this project. This has been with devslopes.com, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>